Did you see the picture I sent to Monica? No, I got to see. It's on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. here we go. Because she has a baby picture. She posted that. I was like, oh, man, I have one just like that. She was like, what? Can you show me? So I sent her two. I sent her that one. That's the one she was struggling already. And then. Look at my baby. Yeah, because you came to her first birthday. Did I? Yes, you did. You came to her first birthday when I stayed in that little one bedroom home before. I was like, oh my God, Reedy. Oh man, I don't even remember that, but I, I did. You was holding Monica, I got a picture of you. You was holding Monica, and, and John Paul was looking at you like this, like you gonna pick me up. <laughs> and John Paul was real with me. It's funny, I, saw, I, was, I showed this to the, what I said. No, I not only knew her as a baby, I knew, I said, I said to someone, I go back far enough. I didn't just know her as a baby. I knew her mother as a baby. No. As a preschooler. That is so fun. I was like, hey. What Larry, Larry's husband, um, I didn't even get a chance to call him because I didn't even know I was coming today. And my job said, but, you know, come. Yeah, he's not feeling well. Oh, what's wrong with the Larry, sir? No, she's kind of right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gina, as you can tell. I see she has it. I see she's not here. Rose? Uh huh.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. Today is Rejoice Sunday. So we come here to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. So let's, I know it's raining outside, but just put some smile on your face. You got the song she sing along with us. It's about rejoicing. Rejoice for what God has done for you.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning all. Good morning, Father. Today we are celebrating the Mass of Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent. Yes. Today, God is telling us to rejoice. Yes. Because our salvation is very near. Amen. So we have to be happy today. We have to rejoice. And God is telling us that when we are happy, when we rejoice, that joy will be shared. It will get to everyone. Amen. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries worldly, let us call to mind our sins, asking God for pardon and mercy. <laughs> God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the lost nativity, enable us, we pray, to attend the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune for fear, to fear. Oh, that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. 
He will sing joyfully because of you. As one sings at, at festivals, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice! Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What shall we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the tongues of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing flour and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. Every feeling of expectation comes with pressure. That pressure can be satisfying or depressing. Just like when you are expecting the arrival of, of a friend or a, a family member you have not seen for a long time. Maybe you are waiting in a, in a train station 
or a bus stop waiting for the arrival of the train or the bus, the expectation is always uh, very depressing. The, the feeling, the anxiety. But sometimes that feeling of expectation can also be satisfying, especially when you see that person coming, when you are seeing the bus approaching you or the train approaching you or you are at, at, the, at the airport and there was an announcement that the, the plane you are waiting for has arrived, has landed, and very soon you are going to meet the person you, you are expecting. So that joy is always there. And that is the joy we are experiencing today. Because the readings of today tells us that that Christ we are waiting for is very close to us. We are just saying it. It's just very close to us. Very soon, he is going to arrive. That is why today, the readings of this Sunday is telling us to rejoice. To always be happy. That feeling should be here now because Christ is already near to us. Today is called Gaudate Sunday. Gaudate means rejoice. These four Sundays of Advent, the church wants us to reflect on four virtues. The first Sunday of Advent, we reflected on peace. The second Sunday, we reflected on love. And today, the third Sunday of Advent, God, church is telling us to reflect on joy. Next Sunday, we be hope. And that's why today we are putting on the rose color signifying joy. Rose said that this is not rose, it is it's pink. Maybe <laughs> she doesn't want us to, to use her name to signify rose. Well, I think it's rose. I think so, it's rose, not pink. So, so but yeah, rose signifies joy. That is why we are putting on rose today. To signify the joy we are having, we are having because Christ is close at hand. But this joy we are celebrating today is not something that we should keep to ourselves. Because when the joy is shared, it is multiplied. God is telling us that as we are going out in our families, in the places we are working, we have to make sure that anybody that comes contact, in contact with us will also experience this joy we are having today. Because joy shared is joy multiplied. And when you actually make another person happy, you also increase your own happiness. But when you make another person sad, you also increase your own sadness. Let me tell you a story. When we were very little, uh, I, I was 10 years old because we, we entered the seminary, the minor seminary, when we were very little. Because in our diocese, you, you have to go through the minor seminary. The minor seminary, just like a high school. I, I don't know how the school system works here in the United States, but you, you, after the, the, the elementary school, you enter the high school. So we were almost like 10, 11 years old when we, were, when we entered the seminary. That was the first time we are leaving our families. Now, in the seminary then, the, the feeding was always very bad. And being the, the first time we are leaving our families, we are used to eating our, our mommy's well-prepared dish. And we are now in the seminary eating the general food that they are preparing for us by the cooks. So uh, at that time, food was, was always a very precious commodity for us. So we have this, our classmate. Uh, his name is uh, uh, John Paul, but we normally uh, uh, like to tease him, and then we call him John Poo, and he hated that name very much. But every time, we want to make him angry by calling him John Poo, and we continue to warn us, don't call me that name, don't call me that name, and we continue to call him John Poo. But why do we always make uh, uh, fun of John Paul? John Paul. Uh, John Paul, even though he came from a very worthy family, very, very worthy. A lot of big cars, a lot of cookies, a lot of good things visiting him. And then when he packs all these goodies, and then some of us who are not opportune very well to, have, uh, to be coming from a very worthy family, we don't have uh, enough. So we will come to him, and then we will beg to, for him to give us some of the cookies. And then he will look at you. Ah, you know, so is, it, is that you? I said, yeah, it's me. You know, I, I will tell him, you know, I'm your friend. He will just laugh. He will go, he will go and, and, bring, and bring out his, his diary and open up his diary. And tell you know, so you said you are my friend, but you called me Jumpu. 
So I, I would, I would, uh, and then I, 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 would, I would deny you immediately. No, 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 Jumpu, you are my friend. John Paul, you are my friend. How can I call you Jumpu? I said, no, I know. I know. He would just open up his diary and said, ah, you know, so you called me Jumpu on the 30th of August. And then he would tell me, ah, when we are coming out from the chapel, you called me Jumpu and then you laughed. I wrote it here. You thought I have forgotten. I, I, will, I will not forget. And then he will not give us the cookies. And then he will keep on cook, eating the cookies himself. But you know why? The more he eats these things himself, he continues to be sad because he has no friend. He has no friend. And then he was sad until one day he decided to leave the seminary because even though he has enough, but because he refused to share the things he had with others, he made no friend while in the seminary. And he couldn't continue because he was always sad. And he asked him, his parents to change school for him because he couldn't bear it staying in the seminary. And that is it with, with all of us. When we share what we have with others, with people in need, we make them happy. And then we also increase our own joy. When you help somebody in need, you increase your own joy. When you make somebody else laugh, you also laugh yourself. Just somebody who is very hungry, you give the person food, the person will tell you thank you, the person will smile. That smile, will, that joy will also radiate in your own heart. And that is what God is telling us today. To make sure that this joy that God is bringing to us, that we make us to, that we should also share it with others. To make the joy radiate to everyone around us. That is exactly what the prophecy of, I, of Zephaniah we read this morning from, the, from the, for, uh, the first reading, chapter 3, from verse 14. Zephaniah prophesied to the people of Israel who were going through a difficult moment in their life. There was corruption, even among the priests that time. The government, the scribes, and the Pharisees, there was corruption, and the people were suffering. There was school scarcity, but Zephaniah prophesied to give them hope, to make, to make them to rejoice, telling them that this problem you are having now is just for the moment, that God is coming to liberate you, that you will rejoice again, that he is coming to make your land prosperous once again. And St. Paul, in the second reading, from his letter to the Philippians, Paul was, was actually writing while in prison. His letter to the people of Philippi, he wrote, he wrote that letter while in prison. And what, what, what was the content of that letter? He told them, rejoice. I insist, always rejoice. Could you imagine somebody in prison wanting to make others to rejoice? Even though he was in a very difficult situation, he was in prison, going to through torments. Probably he was hungry writing that letter. But yet, he wants to give joy to make others to rejoice. And that is why he wrote to the Philippians and admonishing them to always rejoice. Because when you, actually, when you, when you smile, you become younger. I hope you know that. But when you, always, when you are always sad, when you frown your face so much, very soon, wrinkles, We'll, 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 come, we'll come out from on your face. So God doesn't want you to grow old. He wants you to smile every time. Because when you smile, you actually look younger. We are asking God today to give us the grace to always rejoice in the Lord. Because God loves us. And then also, make sure we, want, we, 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 we uh, make others around us to always feel that joy we are experiencing. Amen. May we rise to profess our faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord begotten Son of God, um, Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's care for us, we bring our prayers before him with one voice. For the church in her mission to announce the good news, may God light illuminate her past. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, may the Holy Spirit create in them a heart that works to protect the dignity and sanctity of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from fear or anxiety, may the Lord comfort them with his healing present, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, as we continue our Advent journey, may the Holy Spirit bring us to a renewal awareness of God's presence in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. That Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americans, intercede for us to her, to her son, as she did at the wedding in Canaan, and gain for our nation, our world, and all our families and loved ones the protection that we may be spared the worth of this illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intention, spoken and unspoken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our parish, our homebound parishioners, members of our family and caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. We pray for the soul of Margaret Beyond, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear yeah, our prayer. Almighty Father, hear and answer our needs this day. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we sit.
people criticize the church and they don't know the reason why. But before you criticize, you should give God a try. Let him into your heart and he can give you a brand new start. He can brighten up your way. Turn your darkness into day. All that we are trying to say. All that we, all that we are trying to say. You don't know what you're missing if you're not serving God. You don't know what you're missing if you're not serving God. I've got the Holy Ghost. I can feel it down in my soul. my life he cleansed me and he made me whole everything that he said is true he can do the same thing for you he can brighten up your way turn your darkness into day all that we're trying to say you don't know what you're missing if you're not serving God You should stand up and testify You should say, for God I live Say, for God I die And teach his word wherever you go So that all sinners men may know That he can brighten up your way Turn your darkness into day All that we are trying to say dear brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for the good of the law is holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, to complete what was begun in second mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted up to the Lord. Let all be thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when sorrow was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the seven passion of your son 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wait to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Margaret, Veon, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, or deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory, and the glory the now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in, on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Yes. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy that you should enter Lord, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, good morning. Okay, our announcements this morning are as follows. First of all, do we have any visitors? If so, please stand and introduce yourselves. I think all the family is here. Okay. And our thought for the week. I will see when I am willing to be seen. I will receive new eyes that can see the mysteries of God's own life. 
when I will allow God to see me, all of me, even those parts that myself do not want to see. O oh Lord, see me and let me see. At this time, we'd like to ask you to please continue to pray for our many sick members of the parish. And also, while you're praying, please keep the inmates at 850 Bryan Street in your prayers, as well as inmates throughout the world. Our weekly offering last week was $1,789. We'd like to thank you for your continued support to the parish. And our second collection this morning was for the annual collection for the Retirement Fund for Religious. Please remember in your prayers the more than 500 women and men religious serving in San Francisco. Poinsettia donations. Envelopes are available in the back of church for anyone who wish to make a donation to remember loved ones living or deceased. Okay, our COVID care clinic is in operation right now over at the hall. And um, it is from 11.30 or 11.30 past, but until 2 p.m. today. UCSF will be administering Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and pediatric vaccinations. I just saw Taria outside and she mentioned that they can't do both the exam and the vaccine in the same room. So the exam will be over in the side room and the vaccination will be in the hall. <clears throat> okay. Christmas schedule. We're gonna ask you to please take home the bulletin so that you will have it for the uh, schedule here. Okay, Friday, December 24th, Mass will be here at Lord's at 8 o'clock p.m. On Christmas Day, that's Saturday, December 25th, Mass will be at All Hallows at 9.30 a.m. Vigil Mass is 6.30 p.m. All Hallows. Sunday morning, December 26th, we will have our 10.30 Lord's Gospel Mass here, as we usually do on Sundays. Okay, there's a position available. It is a part-time bookkeeper slash office assistant. Our Lady of Lords Parish, and it is non-exempt part-time, and you report to the pastor and the administrator. Please take home your bulletin and read the qualifications and how to apply for this position. Thank you all very, very much. What a beautiful day it is today. The sun is shining inside, and we have, our, we have our rain, which we really, really need. And God bless each and every one of you, and let's continue to pray for... Amen. And Father Chinoso, it is so nice to see you this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. With Mary, our mother, Virgin of Guadalupe, we pray, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and all of our dead. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.